In this video, we're gonna talk about why do we need air bubbles inside of concrete? And then are all air bubbles created equal? And finally, did you know that every specification when it comes to air and train concrete is totally flawed? My name is Tyler Lay and I am cuckoo for concrete. I'm totally obsessed. And about today's video, I'm extra obsessed. Air bubbles and concrete is one of my favorite topics. You may see this and think that somebody made a mistake. Maybe somebody didn't construct the concrete correctly. You see these voids or bubbles on the surface and some might think they look ugly. They save the concrete. They're a critical part. And these smaller bubbles, these little bitty ones, are much more important than the larger ones. These small itty bitty ones, they're the good ones. Here's a project built by the same contractor using the same materials and the same specifications. But the one on the right, the one that's falling apart after about five years, the bubbles that were inside of them were mainly large. And the one on the left had small bubbles, the good ones. And it has to do with the freeze thaw durability of the concrete. Let me show you what I mean. I'm showing a bubble here and it's surrounded by some water pockets. And as that concrete starts to freeze, that water tries to expand and it'll try to escape. And it tries to find boundaries around it. And it can only go a certain distance. And if it makes that edge or that boundary, everything is saved. Yeah, the concrete is saved. If that water pocket is too far away, and as it starts to expand, if it can't reach a boundary, there's only a certain distance it can travel before it starts to cause damage, before it starts to cause cracks inside of the concrete. And that's not good. Why do we add air to concrete? Well, these air and train bubbles are the key to the freestyle resistance. But this second bullet item here is really important. The volume of air in your concrete does not equal freestyle performance. And the smaller bubbles are much more effective at providing freestyle resistance than the larger bubbles. Typically, specifications look something like this. Based on the aggregate size, they tell you a certain volume of air. And most people make this even simpler. They just say, you need 6% air in your concrete. Do you know where that's from? Well, a guy named Paul Klieger, God bless Paul Klieger, epic, epic guy. The Portland Smith Association, he did a huge study, huge, hundreds and hundreds of concretes. And he freeze and he thawed those concretes over and over and over again. And he found the secret to making them last long was putting air bubbles, using soap to put air bubbles inside the concrete. And we've been using that technology ever since. Although Paul Klieger did some amazing things, his materials he looked at were very limited compared to today's mixtures. Concrete has changed so much since the 1950s. Paul Klieger's mixtures didn't have any fly ash or slag or silica fume in it. And the admixtures he used, he only used one. One, an air and training admixture. That was the only admixture that existed back then. How many concrete mixtures can you think about today that only have one admixture in them? Almost none. They almost all have a whole cocktail of different chemicals in it that help make that concrete better. We've got two air void systems here, one on the left, one on the right. Both of them have the same volume of air, but as a concrete person, we'd much rather have the one on the right, just because that same reason I showed you earlier in that picture. There's much more protection out of the air void system on the right. So how do you measure this? How do we understand what's going on? Typically, we use a hardened air void analysis. It's called an ASTM C457 analysis. This is where you cut the concrete, you polish it, and you look at it underneath the microscope. And you basically trace over the surface in a line. And every time that line intersects a bubble, you measure it. And that's called a cord. Now, on the air void system on the left, we have a bunch of small bubbles. On the air void system on the right, we have a bunch of large bubbles. We've taken these concrete, we've polished them, we've colored them black, we've put white 
inside all of the voids. And you can see on the one on the left, there's just not that many large voids. And the one on the right, look at all those large bubbles. We would much rather have this air void system on the left. Here's another way to look at this. This is the sizes of the cords. This is small voids. This is large voids. And this is the frequency or how often they occur. The green line here is made up of mainly small bubbles and the blue is made up of mainly large bubbles. If we had to pick, we would much rather have the green. Now, instead of looking at this entire line, a guy named TC Powers in 1949 came up with this really cool concept called the spacing factor. He took all of these numbers, all of these measurements, and said, I'm gonna find an average size void, averagely spaced, uniformly inside the paste. There's a lot of averages there. And he finds this angular distance here is something called twice the spacing factor. You don't have to understand anything I just said. You just need to know the spacing factor is a magic number. It has something to do with the air void spacing and the number that we want is less than 0 0.008 inches. That's defined by ACI 201. So we would say the green line here has a low spacing and the blue line has a high spacing factor. Here's another way to look at this. Here's our air volume down here and here's our spacing factor. And that's our magic number of 0 0.008 inches. And we can see as our air content goes up, our spacing factor goes down. As you're adding more and more air to the concrete, then the spacing of the bubbles has to get closer and closer and closer together. Now, if you have small bubbles, if we get about 6% air, which is around most specifications, then you get the nice, beautiful spacing factor we care about. If you go to the large bubbles, if you have large bubbles in, in your concrete, then you need much, much more higher air content to get this magical spacing of your bubbles. You cannot tell the size of your bubbles by just looking at the volume. We're gonna see this over and over again. Now here's another plot that shows air content down here versus durability factor. This is performance in the freeze thaw test. This is where we make concrete and we freeze it and we thaw it over and over and over again. And we actually send a stress wave through it and we measure how much cracks form on the inside. This is the line that we call failure, and everything above this line is good, and everything below the line, not so good. And you can see with this small bubble mixture that if I get enough air, about 4% air in my concrete, everything is great. But look at this large bubble mixture. I need a lot more, about 7% air. That's, that's quite a bit different. The big takeaway here is that air content alone, air volume alone is not the way to determine if you're gonna have freeze-thaw durable concrete, you have to know about the size of the bubbles. Here's more data. Here's air content on the x-axis. Here is spacing factor, that magical number here. And there's that 0 .008 inches. And everything that's a blue dot here, these are all mixtures with small bubbles. And everything that's a filled dot, that means it passed the freeze-thaw test. These open dots, that means they failed the freeze thaw test. All those are small bubbles. Now, if we look at mixtures with larger bubbles, which happen all the time, look, there's an offset, a clear offset. And look at these two bubbles here. Look at these two data points right here. They're open. They have 7% air. These two data points would pass every specification in the world when it comes to freeze thaw durability. And they're failing the freeze thaw test. Put simply, what Paul Klieger did was awesome. It worked great for his time, but Klieger, his mixes, they were old. They were from the 1950s. They were when Dwight D. Eisenhower was president of the United States. And the specifications that we use today are still based on Paul Klieger's research. They were great in the 1950s, but our concretes are totally different today. So we need to know the size of our bubbles in our concrete. And although we can run a hardened airboat analysis, it's just not practical to run it regularly. It's in future videos. I'm gonna talk about some new tools that can help us with this. Thanks everybody for watching. Leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and leave me a comment below. Take care, bye.